Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast, and I got to ask you today, because this is day 43, where are you at in, in 2019? Where are you? And not only that, I got to ask you another question, and that is what God asked Elijah in 2 Kings 19, verse 9. Why are you here? Why are you here? Because Elijah, he was in a cave. And brothers and sisters, if you're in a cave on this 43rd day of 2019, I'm telling you that God says, come out, come out, because you have an incredible future and God doesn't make junk. And when he formed you, he did it before you got in your mother's womb, before you made the mistake, before you went through the divorce, before you filed bankruptcy, before your whole world fell apart. God says, come out. I knew all that was going to happen to you, but I still call and I've chosen you. So when we look at this day, day 43, day 43, we're going to talk about, we're talking about some of the things that we need to possess before we can really live in the promised land, not to visit, not to visit, but to live in the promised land. Then some things we must have on yesterday uh, in Joshua chapter five, we talked about uh, we must be in covenant, which means some things must be cut away. We talked about circumcision, cutting away something that it, that has been with you all your life, even before you was conscious of it. Do you hear that? Even before you were conscious of it, before it existed in you, before you was conscious of it. It existed, and now you got to cut it away because God says you're in covenant with me. So we talked about that yesterday, and that's in Joshua chapter 5, verse 8 and 9. I'm going to continue in Joshua chapter 5, and I'm going to go to the next two verses. And still in Gilgal, some powerful things happen in this place. It says this, Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover. Now, don't you hear that? And kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. They kept the Passover. Kept the Passover. And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread, parched grains, on the very same day. Passover. Passover. Why are they still keeping Passover? They did Passover in Egypt. It was that tenth plague that brought them out. It was the one that did it. It was the one that broke the shackles. You know, they had had flies and gnats and and darkness and thunders, uh, storms and, and, and all of that that had happened. But nothing broke them free. It was the power of the blood. Now, we know. That Jesus was our Passover. That's what Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. That Jesus is our Passover. He is the lamb that shed his blood to bring us out. Because the law couldn't do it. And innocence couldn't do it. Nothing could break us free from it but the blood of Jesus. The blood of the lamb. So here they're keeping Passover. They keep in Passover and they were commanded to te- keep Passover because they were to keep in mind what God did for them. They were to remember, remember, remember. You, you, you must remember. You, you must remember. You, you, you can't forget because in remembering is the power and the strength because when you remember You get a merry heart and there is a praise and there is a worship when we think about what Jesus did. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. 
then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. See, so when you're living, when you live, if you're going to live in, in the promised land, you can't forget how we got there. How do we get free? See, this is one of the things to guard against them forgetting. And that's what's going to happen. They forgot and they they begin to serve other gods. They forgot after they had the houses that they didn't build, the vineyards that didn't plant, the silver multiplied, the gold multiplied. And they forgot. So Passover is to keep us balanced, to keep us with an understanding that we are here because of the blood. The blood brought us to this point. And it wasn't our blood. It was the blood of, blood of the lamb is the reason we're in the spot we're in. Now, if you keep that in mind, you're not going to get lifted up. If you keep that in mind, that it was nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. Without the blood, they don't have an opportunity to even get out of Egypt. Forget about crossing the Jordan. You don't, you don't make it out of Egypt without blood, blood. So they kept the Passover. And this was the same thing that we do when we do communion. Jesus says, as often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. You do it in remembrance of me. So as often as we do Passover or communion, because Passover became communion, because a real lamb showed up, the lamb of God. And we do it so we won't forget. It is not our hands that delivered us. It is not our hands that brought us out. It wasn't our blood that brought us out. It was the blood of the Lamb of God. The blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God. Behold, John says, the Lamb of God. So, so now what they would do, before they enter into possessing the promised land, before they get to uh, going to battle with uh, the city of Jericho and the people of Jericho and taking that city, the first city across the Jordan, the first city they're going to engage in fighting in the promised land, we do Passover. Now, that's, now that's, that's pretty powerful because I just, I, just, I just thought of that. What a strategy. The best strategy you can have in your life is putting God first. That's the best strategy. Best strategy. No wonder the Bible says, says to us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added. So they are acknowledging him first. So when they go into battle, they go into battle with the understanding that we acknowledged God. Passover. Now, it's been a long time since they got out of Egypt. It's, it's been a while. It's been about 40 years since they got out of Egypt. 40 years since the deaf angel that came and killed the firstborn of all the Egyptians. But passed over the Israelites. And not one of them, not one firstborn died. Not one firstborn died of male or animal or anything in Goshen, in where the, in the land the Israelites were saying. Not one person died. But in Egypt, that was a great cry because the firstborn died because they didn't have any blood. So what they're doing, the gist is what they're doing here is acknowledging why we are where we are. Now, this is what I like about this. They took time. Yesterday, I, we talked about them taking time to circumcise all the people, and then they had to stay. They didn't get in such a big hurry that we got to hurry and get on, get it done. We got to move. We got to move. We're behind. No, 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 no. We're going to keep covenant. We're going to do what he commanded. And then before we go into battle, we're going to remember 
how we got out of Egypt. We're going to remember how we got out of slavery. We're going to acknowledge him first. Now, see, some folks who went straight into battle. They went straight into battle. They'd been rushing because if they would have thought they lost an advantage if they didn't go into battle. If we don't go into battle, we're going to lose an advantage. They already know we're here, so we got to move quickly. No, no, no. What happened was we're going to put God first. And that is one of the lessons, that is one of the hardest lessons for us to learn, especially uh, when we try to do it ourselves and, and want to use our hands to do it. Instead of using those hands lifted to God, we're trying to use those hands to get stuff done. Now, I'm not saying you don't use your hands. You got to do that. But I'm saying, who do you use those hands first to? Do you use them in praise and adoration to God or doing what needs to be done? He said, seek ye first, not only. So lazy people might think about only. He's not saying only. Seek ye first. Put me first. I'll give you that. Now, what's going to happen? They put him first and they're going to win the battle. We're going to see. We're going to study the battle of Jericho where they're going to win the battle by marching around the wall. But they put him first. We're going to take time to keep covenant, circumcised, to keep covenant. We're going to take time to have Passover. We're going to take time to remember. See, it's like an anniversary. It's like an anniversary. Blood. Blood. Like we were doing a marriage. We're going to take time. We're not going to skip it. We're not going to postpone it. God has blessed us to see it again. And we're, we're still here together. We're going to take time. No matter how busy everything is, we're going to take time. We're going to make time to celebrate God. And brothers and sisters, that, that is what we have to do. We have to make time to put him first, to acknowledge him. You don't lose anything. And I think that's what it is in the 21st century. We think we lose uh, a tactical advantage. We think we lose, lose something if we put him first. Even even when we do push him, put him first, we are rushing in the putting him first. And what he's saying to us is be still. Be still. This battle is not yours in the first place. The battle is God. So be still and know that I'm God. They took time. They took the most precious thing they had, time, which, which equates to life. We're going to take time and acknowledge him because he has given us everything that we have. And he has made this moment possible. And brothers and sisters, even as I'm talking to you now, even now, the moment you're hearing, the moment that you can hear this word, the moment that you have it in your life, being here, being alive, your most blessed moments in your life, God made it available. It is because of him. They took time, so when we look at this, we have to understand there's some uh, remembering, and that's what the book of Deuteronomy was all about. Remember, remember, remember. Do not forget. And we have to do that. We do never, 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 never get upset with remembering or somebody pouring out to remember. Do not get upset with that because when you look at the history of what happened, a whole book given to remembering and, and, and going back and rehearsing and yet and still they forgot. So remember that it is the blood that has brought us thus far. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. 
On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.